So tonight, <clears throat> this evening, I want to extol the virtues of being late to the game, of coming to appreciate something in the uh, complicated space between novelty and nostalgia. And in the following slides, I'm going to show a bunch of different media, phenomenon, objects that um, dwell in this kind of in-between space. But to start out, I have three questions. First, what would it look like for education for us to be OK with being late to the game? Put slightly differently, what would a playful pedagogy and ethics of being late to the game look like? And finally, to put it slightly differently again, what would it look like for the production of, for our consumption of pedagogical gadgets, methodologies, platforms, to resist a language of the cutting edge and instead embrace belatedness? <coughs> So in this talk, I'm not interested in rehashing arguments that pit digital innovation against something like slow, slow scholarship, <laughs> or, or sorting educators or students into uh, doctor status silos. I want us to think about a different pedagogical space, and I think it's a space most of us actually work in most of the time. And it's the space that I'm call calling being late to the game. And it has four key features, and the first one is it resists simplistic accounts of tech adoption. So one very famous schema is that you're either an innovator or an early adopter or early majority or late majority or you're a laggard. And one can easily see how this actively encourages moralistic judgment. That is like the laggards drag everybody down. They undo the hard work of the innovators, the early adopters. <laughs> What this misses, though, is that tech adoption, tech consumption is wrapped up with our aesthetic attachments. So like, what would we call a 18-year-old freshman in college who gets super into, not the 18-year-old, <laughs> who gets super into uh, 90s web design because of the Captain Marvel film's official website, which is going to be... <laughs> There you go. Would they be, so would that person, would that 18 year old be an early adopter of a nostalgic 90s web design? <laughs> what would, how would we characterize voices that levy serious critiques against ed tech platforms, even as the same people with those voices we would understand to be early adopters or innovators? Being late to the game allows us to jettison the idea that tech adoption transparently signals some sort of particular virtue. Second, being late to the game reveals the ways our aesthetic attachments refuse to follow, oh, that's a good one, refuse to follow preset time frames. We're always shuttling back and forth between an attraction to the latest thing and a desire for what came before. And we inhabit really complicated, conflicting temporalities. We dwell with really complicated desires. And I think our response to that situation for ourselves, for others, for other educators, for other students, should be patient. Third, it <laughs> responds critically to design and aesthetics in a hypermediated age. So who gets passionate about a 1989 Ford Taurus? Yeah, no, no. Hipsters? Any? No? <laughs> I mean, people may be w desiring the latest iPhone, and they may be interested in the first iPhone, but who cares about an iPhone 4? Right? All of this stuff up here has been, um, you know, objects, media, phenomenon that, frankly, have uninteresting aesthetics. Um, in contrast to this are objects that are, as Sean Nagai puts it, cute or zany, things that attract our attention. Um, and these things can, for a while, have, can be crucial cultural commodities. Um, and I've totally lost. So point four, <laughs> on to point four. Uh, being late to the game also reflects on issues of inclusion and exclusion. It's exciting to be on the cutting edge, <laughs> but, we need to perhaps reconsider who we count as being on the cutting edge, and we need to consider the ways in which the uh, kind of following after the next thing um, means some people are struggling to 
catch up, to follow the rules, because the rules keep changing on them. And being late to the game means welcoming people into play where clarified, inclusive rules are the norm. So really quickly, by way of conclusion, being late to the game, four key features, resists simplistic accounts of tech adoption. Second, reveals how our attachments, our aesthetic attachments, refuse to follow easy timeframes. Third, responds critically to design and aesthetics in a hypermediated age. And finally, considers and reflects on inclusion and exclusion. Thank you. Thank you.